Hey guys, what's happening? Well, in my world, I'm standing here with my North Mississippi Hill Country picnic shirt on. Uh, this one's from 2011. I also have one that's signed by Cody and Luther. I would have put that on, but I hate to see you coveting when it's this hot out because it's hard on your heart, the heat is, and it's hard on your respiration system. But when you see stuff that I have that you don't, I don't want to be responsible for putting you over the edge. Yeah, I know. So the North Mississippi Hill Country Picnic is the premier spot for finding Hill Country Blues. Um, played live. The festival is every June. Now they've missed a couple because of this pandemic thing, but they're back and they're live this year, this June, 2021. That festival is put on by Kenny and Sarah Brown. If you don't know who Kenny Brown is and you're listening to our kind of music, then you haven't really heard our kind of music. So I'm going to give you a link down below about Kenny Brown, how to get his music, um, as well as the Hill Country Picnic. You need to start planning to go there. Um, one of the most exciting things about the picnic, um, besides the artists and the music, is they have one of my guitars there in the raffle this year. Um, and I'm happy about that and happy that they're associating Paul Miro Junk Pile guitars with that festival as one of the raffle people. Anyway, it's a good way to support the festival and possibly get one of my guitars. So you need to check that out. So, moving right along, back in the hot shop today, I am working on this Fred McDowell themed Mississippi license plate guitar and when I do an episode I'm going to put a link to it right about there if it doesn't show up that means that this guitar hasn't done been done three years from now it will be long gone and it is going to an artist in North Mississippi but the part I'm at right now there will be a whole episode about how this was built the part I'm at right now is that I'm putting the bridge on this guitar you see that bridge okay this caused me to have memory flashback, which is increasingly rare at my age. Now, I remember, which again, at my age, that's incredible, the days when I was using like bolts. Look at this, pumpkin. That's a good one. Mississippi All Stars gig poster signed by both Cody and Luther. Do not covet this. Look at that artwork. That's some yard sale uniqueness if I ever saw it. How do you get a unique pumpkin like that? Unique up on it. That's what you do. Anyway, I was using bolts and God knows what. In fact, I would find door pulls and stuff like that and take them out of the cabinets so I could get this bolt to put up here. I guess if you don't have a bolt, this part becomes worthless and it's laying around on the floor. <laughs> Gets caught in the vacuum cleaner, etc. Then I advanced to something better. I was still using bolt for the knot and that's kind of a problem because these threads threads cause things to turn that's a huge discovery for us right well they'll also cause your strings to move and your intonation to be off but on the bob law guitar which was also the antelope valley fair first prize winner signed by bob law the third this is coveter's paradise this morning i know but the bridge we're back to the bridge I started making bridges out of swamp cooler tubing and washers and grounding clamps. Look at that. Now we're really going to mess up the... The only thing that's really stayed stable about my guitars is the greaser. You, you have to have that in case your playing gets rusty. Fast forward. So then, despite still being so ignorant as to use a bolt for a knot... I had progressed to using a floating bridge or half of one thereof, you see that there, um, which gave me the ability to adjust this up and down. So I was moving ahead at Darwionic speed. Yeah, this is uh, the Margaret Garrett cigar box guitar signed by her right there. The coveting never stops. Anyway. She recorded a little clip that tells the connection between my daughter Tammy and these guitars and get the Kleenexes out 
because this is real. It's up there. Click that link. Margaret, you are an awesome person and an awesome guitarist. Anyway, moving right along. So, moral of the story, I becoming, have become increasingly inept at using floating bridges. This is a nice one. Or parts thereof to create stuff like this. Roller bridges. Because guess what? People that play guitars actually want them to be playable. So this week, I don't want to brag or anything, but it's been pretty amazing. I had two of my guitars floating around at the Bentonia Blues Festival. I had one come out on an album. One will be playing today, um, streaming out of the UK. But anyway, there's been like five of my guitars, so these... Ghosts from the past keep coming up. Anyway, what's this episode about? This episode is really short. That's why the front end of it's very long. How do you put one of these on something junky like this? Well, as you're going to see in this episode, the thing that it took me forever to learn is there is a direct relationship between the height of the bridge and where your fingerboard needs to be. So if you're putting your fingerboard your fretboard, whatever you want to call it, your neck, onto the body of your guitar, whatever that's made out of a coffee can, a license plate, a cigar box, or an arch top with a action too high because you bought junk and you didn't know it. There's an episode right there, Buyer's Guide to Junk Arch Tops. You want to check that one out. Anyway, if you don't pay attention to the height of the bridge when you're building your guitar, you're going to have to reverse engineer making the bridge fit because your neck is too low. That's the placement. So, how difficult is this? It's not. Once you know that if your bridge is this high and you're going to put it here, you got your intonation right and all that, then your neck needs to be at that height. So. Think about the height of the bridge before you actually think about where your neck's going to go. So that said, let's finally get into this episode. This is going to be so fast, don't blink your eye. It's that simple now. I have evolved into an actual human being that's capable of thought. Let's go. All right, what was I just doing there? Well, we're taking a floating bridge and putting it on here. Um, we take this part off the top and cut this down until we end up with something that looks like this. Now notice that the thumb screw posts are sticking down below the bridge. Do you see that? Here's why. Well, first off, as always, we take our fancy Beverly Hills yardstick, measure from the back of the nut, make a mark at the 12th fret, double that. That gives us that line you see right there, and that's where the bridge is going to go. So, we marked off where the posts are, took these out, took an all, marked it, drilled these holes out like this, and now this bridge base fits down in those holes so it's not going to move around we put the spacers on and we've got a roller bridge here isn't that fancy we're going to put that on and of course look at that everything lines up good the height is going to be perfect 
All right, wasn't that simple? Speaking of evolving, ooh, now look, I'm using truss rods so I can get the string action where it needs to be and not have my, my action be this high or my neck be this high or my bridge be this low. So hey, don't forget, give me a like, subscribe if you haven't. This content is getting very varied. Yeah, that makes sense. Very varied. So there are playlists. Uh, look down in the playlist. Click on the playlist. I'm not looking at it, so I can't remember. Anyway, there's playlists about cigar boxes, coffee can guitars, license plate guitars, arch tops, whatever you want. Anyway, don't forget to look below in the resources section and learn about Canyon Ground, the North Mississippi Hill Country Picnic, all that kind of stuff. Your life will not be culturally dynamic like me without that stuff below. Hey, thanks for watching. I will see you next time.